All right, today I'm going to show you how to deal with our controller and uh, send the signal from our controller to external device like AC motor. DC you just connected in here. If you have an AC motor and any other type like partialized DC motor or maybe something else, then you can just send the signal uh, from this connector to the device. Um, well, it might be solid state. It might be this kind of inverter and something else. And what I'm going to tell you today is how to deal with the noises when you're sending the signal, especially PWM signal, which this kind of inverter generates to and sending to the to the motor. Then you are sending also a lot of interference to your logic if your cables are you know just put incorrectly the path for. Uh, are crossing uh, each other or even worse you're making some kind of loop or something let me see uh, what kind of cable you are using mostly in the installation even this kind of solution and even worse you're just making some kind of loop and sending the lot of interferences uh, using it uh, like an antenna or something uh, in the next few minutes I will, I'm gonna show you how this cable is dealing with a signal and what is going on with it and why to use this kind of cable which is shield and of course if, uh, if you are using the shield then you can have to you have to connect the shield to the ground to make sure that everything is work perfect so uh, especially dealing with this kind of inverter make sure the cables are in the shield okay so what do we have here we have a two inverters one motor and our ray controller uh, as you can see that we are using the side connection in here, side connector to control the logic and of course uh, we are able to manage the direction of the motor and the speed through the inverter. So uh, in here we have a delta configuration according to the motor. Why? As you can see it's 230 volt in delta configuration. Those inverter are 230 and there are three phases so I'm just connecting them to one phase and control three phase uh, motor but remember this must be delta uh, okay so what do we have according to our wireless uh, between the inverter and the controller there's a lot of cables actually six of them because we have a directions and the power we are powering up our controller uh, from the inverters so uh, now when you can see those cables are just on the side and this worst possible cable is in here connected and going in the loop especially in the loop and now I'm going through this fast connection and going to the to the motor so well this loop is generating a lot of noises and of course when i put this on site there's no any problem you can see that this is all working the inverter is reacting and see the signal and it's easy to to see that that the speed is changing i'm just pushing leaving pushing leaving everything is working fine and if i were to just you know make this cable and then cross those cables with our loop then you will see that something wrong is going on with our signals and let's see how it might be working remember logic is 0 and 12 volt in here so everything lower than 5 volt is 0 everything higher than 8 volt is 1 everything between 5 and 8 is something from inverter perspective it doesn't work so it's just you know it's not able to control uh, you're not able to control this uh, this inverter if you're sending wrong signal so let's do it i'm just putting the the loop in here uh, going with the cable signal and what's going on right now as you can see the inverter is not working sometimes it's starting and in most cases just just starting the signal and stop and starting the signal and stop 
as you can see in, uh, in this first in inverter on the, the line. I will take it out and now everything is working perfect. So, so in such easy way, you will uh, make a lot of frustra frustration to you. And this is most important reason why you have to make sure that your all wires are put in correct way or just use the shields on the cables. Of course, they are pretty expensive, but they're solving a lot of problem to you. Uh, in here, there's a lot of mess, sorry for that, but this cable is pretty expensive, so I just take it like, like, like that and just made a loop with all of them and just putting our controller and our super cables, signal cables through the loop. And now, even through the loop, with this kind of cable, you don't have any problems. You can see on the on the display, on the inverter, this is reacting. I'm just pushing, putting, and something else, but it's still working very good. And just leaving it, okay, it's living. Okay, so now you know how to deal with this inverter, inverter, and how to with the with the problems when it is not working. If you are sending any signal, just use the shield on the cable. Uh, of course. As you saw, this can, kind of cable should be connected between the inverter and the motor. Uh, you can, of course, use the shields when you are sending the signal on the signal cables, but this is completely a different story. And uh, well, it might be helpful, maybe uh, in your case. Uh, in here, uh, we want to show you the reason, and the reason was the cable between the inverter and the motor not the signal cable so if you are connecting the controller and see the problem that it is the signal is not sent to the inverter in here then don't search first in here of course you can just make sure that those cables is, uh, is in good condition and something like that and it's put in the path and it's not just you know laying somewhere somewhere but uh, the, the signal cable, cable in, in most cases is not the reason of the noises. The, uh, the cable between the inverter and the motor is the reason. Actually, every cable when you are sending some kind of PWM signal is the reason. So then you use the shields on the cables. Thank you very much.